Have you ever wanted to get smoother skin in DaVinci Resolve? While there is an amazing face refinement tool built into DaVinci, unfortunately that's just for the studio version. Luckily there is a way in the free version to get smoother looking skin. Plus, I'll show you a couple extra things to boost the look of those faces. The first thing to do is to hop into the color page. So if you don't see it, just come down here to this color icon. And right on here on our first node, I'm just going to name it Skin. And what we'll do is go into the qualifier window. If you don't see that, it's this little eyedropper icon right here. And once we are on here, we want to make sure that we are only going to be able to see what we are selecting. In this case, a certain color range. So you can do that one of two ways. You can either hold shift H or you can click this icon right here. Now with the eyedropper tool selected, we'll just select an area of the skin right there and come down here to this area and we'll just adjust it. Now yours is probably going to be different depending on what shot you're working with and the person you're working with. I'm just going to adjust this width down somewhere around there. And I'm also going to take the softness and I'm going to smooth it out a lot. Probably around there and we'll take our width opening that back up a bit more. That's a pretty good area for our hue. Now we need to adjust the saturation and this we don't have to do too much, at least on this particular clip. So just just the low a bit, the high, I'll move it up a bit more and then I'll soften out that high some more as well. And now our luminance, I'm going to bring the high up a bit. And then also bring that low. Uh, somewhere around there, we can still see the face a bit. And I'll go ahead and just soften that low spot up some. Pretty much right there is good. We really don't want to be selecting like the eyes or any hair, so we're just trying to get as much of the skin as possible. So now we're going to go into our matte finesse area, which is right here. And I usually just adjust the clean black. So I'll move that up, the clean white, pull this up quite a bit. And then the denoise. Let's go up a lot because the whole idea of this is you want it to be as subtle as possible so that it looks more realistic and not super obvious. All right, I think that's a pretty good selection right there. Yeah, we do have a little bit of the trees in the background, but that's all right. You're not really gonna notice too much of a difference with this. And if anything, we can always just put a mask around the person if we don't wanna get any of those outside objects involved with this. So from here, we'll go over to our color wheels. We'll go to our detail and we'll bring this down. I'm gonna go down to about negative 40 or so. I'm gonna hit Shift H to turn off that selection and control D on and off so you can see that we're actually blurring a little bit of the skin texture. Now the next thing we need to do is bring in some detail back to that face by sharpening it up. So we just go over to this icon right here and we'll come over to radius and we'll drop it down literally just to 0.49. We don't need too much. From here, we're gonna make another node and we're actually just gonna copy the same settings we have here. So we can just select this node, Control or Command C, copy, Alt or Option S, make a new node. They can Control or Command V to paste. And this one, I'm actually gonna rename it Skin 2, just to separate it. And with this one, we're gonna go back over to our color wheel and we're going to just double click to get rid of that so we don't have to mess with that. And what we'll actually do is in our gamma, we're going to adjust it to be more of a skin tone. So we're gonna boost the saturation and colors to look more like skin. And one great thing to do is to have your vector scope open. If you don't see your vector scope, hit this drop down and just click vector scope or make sure also you have this wave icon turn on right here. 
And what you're gonna look for is this line, and what that line is is where the skin tones usually will set. If you don't see that, click this icon here, and then just make sure that show skin tone indicator is selected. And from here, we'll just take the little dot in the middle of our gamma, and I'm going to click and drag it up to that kind of orangey area. And you'll see on the vector scope that it goes with it. And we literally don't have to move it too much because it's just very subtle. If you go too much, it starts looking really bad. So I'm actually gonna back it off a bit. Yeah, probably right there. We're gonna go back over to our blur area and we're actually gonna bring this radius down a lot. So let me zoom in on the face so you can see it better here. And we'll bring it down quite a bit. And what we're gonna do actually, because it looks horrible right now, we're gonna take this mix and we're gonna drop it down. So this is gonna mix the detail and the blur. See, look at, look at that before and after. Now with the extra things I wanted to show you, the first one is going to be the eyes. So we're gonna make a new node, Alter Option S, I'm gonna name this one Eyes. And we'll zoom in so we can get right on the eyes. And so what we're gonna do is go over to our window icon right here, and then click the circle. And we'll just bring the size down and then take these little red dots and move them out. So we're feathering it. And we can always hit Shift H back so we can see what we're selecting. Rotate this a bit, bring it in. Somewhere around there looks good. And then we're also gonna go and click plus on the circle to make another one and repeat that same process for the other eye. Now that we have that done, we're gonna go over to our color wheels. And you also wanna make sure to turn off the little window icon so you can actually see the face and the eyes. And now what we're gonna do is take our gain and bring it up. Not too much, we just wanna brighten the eyes so it can draw the viewer's eyes to the eyes of the person on screen. As well, we're gonna take our detail and bring it up just a little bit, not too much, probably around 25. Now we actually need to track this. So it's real simple. All you do is go to the tracker icon, which is right next to the window. Depending on your shot, you may have to turn some of these off. For this one, I'm just gonna leave them all on. I'm gonna click this icon right here, which is going to track forwards and backwards. So it doesn't matter where we were on the clip. Now we need to do the same thing with the other eye. So just select that and same process. And then look at the difference we did with the eyes. Now we're gonna do something similar, but with the lips. And with the lips, we're gonna go back into that qualifier tool. Let's make a new node, name it lips, and go into our qualifier here, and we'll just select the lips. Make sure that we have our view turned on so we can see what we're selecting. And pretty much the same process we did before, but this time we wanna just isolate the lips. You can't get it super perfect, so that's why we're gonna go over to our window and throw a circular mask on top of it. Now that we're done with that, we'll go back over to our color wheels. And just like what we did with our skin, we're gonna take our gamma and bring that up. But this time we're gonna go straight up towards the pink, back that off just a little bit, somewhere around there, and then go back over to our tracker and track it. So I've shown you how to get smoother looking skin and make the lips and eyes pop. But if you want to know some awesome DaVinci Resolve tips and tricks, check out this video popping up right here. Click it. Click it.